two big state election results that have come in, uh, decisive mandates in both Haryana as well as in Jammu and Kashmir. But the result in Jammu and Kashmir will have far-reaching implications, uh, not just here in India, but across the world as well. And uh, the man who has led the charge for the national conference returning to power after a gap of 10 years is the chief of the party and former chief minister, Mr. Omar Abdullah, likely the next chief minister as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Omar Abdullah, for speaking with us here on CNN News 18. Uh, first things first, many congratulations. The national conference has won 42 seats out of the 52 that you have contested. Is this result far better than what you expected for the national conference, particularly because you've been out of power for the last 10 years? Well, they definitely exceeded our expectations. I think our expectations were uh, somewhat tempered uh, by uh, the setback uh, that I faced personally uh, in the recent uh, Lok Sabha elections in the Baramalwa constituency. Uh, so when we extrapolated those results, even though we were the single largest party, we came somewhere, I think, 34, 35 assembly segments, uh, which is what we had pegged our expectations at. Uh, thankfully, uh, the electorate uh, was uh, far more generous than that uh, and I'm deeply humbled uh, by the verdict and the mandate that they have delivered. It's been very generous to your party, no doubt about it. Like I said, 42 seats you have uh, returned with. But do you think the electorate was less generous to your alliance partner, the Congress, which could have performed uh, maybe a little better? I think they've won only one seat in Jammu. So I'm not going to start uh, a coalition government uh, on a bitter note. Uh, I'm sure uh, the Congress is looking at uh, these elections and trying to figure out uh, what worked and what didn't uh, as much uh, with regard to Jammu and Kashmir as with regard to Haryana. Uh, Congress wasn't the only one uh, to get the mixed signals. Uh, every pollster got it wrong. Uh, every person who visited Haryana got it wrong. Uh, so, it would be unfair to blame uh, the Congress, uh, but uh, I'm sure every political party takes stock. We have to, even though uh, we've won as many seats as we have and had a 75% strike rate. Yeah. There are still seats that we lost uh, and seats that I'm deeply disappointed at having lost. Uh, and we'll have to look into the reasons for those. Now, you will be running the first uh, state government, as it were, since the last election that happened more than 10 years ago. A lot has changed in Jammu and Kashmir in the last five years. How easy or difficult would it be to run a state government, A, in coalition, and B, uh, a central government, which, of course, has a very different view on how Jammu and Kashmir should be run? How easy or difficult would it be to run uh, such, a, such a setup, such an establishment? No government is easy to run. Uh, I ran a government for six years in coalition with the Congress, uh, even as a state. And uh, I'd be the last person to tell you it was an easy government to run. Uh, so, uh, this incoming government is not going to be an easy government to run. Uh, it will have its own unique challenges. Uh, the most unique challenge is that it's the first time we'll be operating as a union territory uh, with an empowered Raj Bhavan. Uh, so, we'll have to, we'll have to na navigate some tricky waters and it'll be a learning experience as we go along. One of the things you sort of said actively in the campaign was also that, uh, you know, this is in a sense a vote against the abrogation of Article 370. After the results that you saw yesterday, where the National Conference in particular has swept through the valley, uh, the BJP of course has done very well in Jammu. What is your reading of what this means in the context of abrogation of 370? Because this was a big campaign issue. Your party had made this a big campaign issue as well. Well, people have rejected the politics of the BJP uh, by an overwhelming majority. Otherwise, the BJP would have been in office right now. Uh, the fact is that people have rejected the changes that were made on the 5th of August 2019. And they have rejected how they were governed subsequent to that. Uh, they have rejected everything uh, that has not been to their liking in these last five years. Uh, and uh, that was their right. But at the same time, Mr. Abdullah, and, and I guess you'll appreciate this, you, you will also have to reach out to the center, work along with the center. Uh, how easy or difficult would it be uh, to maintain a cordial and conducive relationship with whether it's the prime minister or the home minister or, or leaders in the central government? Because ultimately, uh, you can't run, especially like you said earlier, uh, this is a state assembly of a union territory. Uh, it's not quite 
the way you've run previous governments. So how important would it be to forge a, a strong relationship with uh, the central leaders? Look, anyway, uh, any government in Jammu and Kashmir should have a healthy working relationship with the government of India. Uh, and, and I don't want anybody to confuse what I'm saying. I'm not for a moment suggesting that the National Conference has to establish a good relationship with the BJP. Uh, that's not happening. Uh, the National Conference uh, is no more going to be a friend of the BJP's than the BJP is going to be of the National Conference. I'm drawing a distinction between political parties and governments. I'm saying that the government of Jammu and Kashmir will have to have a, uh, a, a reasonable and decent relationship with the government of India. As any federal structure de de demands, I don't think the people of Jammu and Kashmir will benefit from an antagonistic relationship. I mm -hmm. don't think they'll benefit from a, a relationship filled with tension. There's enough tension in Jammu and Kashmir on our borders. Uh, we don't need to import that tension uh, into governance. Uh, that said, it takes two hands to clap. And therefore, uh, there's only so much the state government can do. Uh, there will have to be some reciprocity uh, from Raj Bhavan and uh, from the government of India, but I hope uh, that reciprocity will be available. So, so where do you see the state uh, headed over the next five years? You had talked about restoration of statehood. I'll come to that in one second. But as a state, after having the people's mandate, the first one in the last 10 years, and you've got a resounding victory, uh, do you still see potential hurdles in your way? One of which you referred to about, you know, uh, striking a smooth relationship with the center is one of them, but, but what else do you see for the future in the next five years? Look, I think we need to draw uh, the distinction between Delhi and Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, Delhi was never promised a state, Delhi has never been a state. Uh, Delhi is always that hybrid model uh, where it's a state but not a state. Uh, we were a state. Uh, we have always been told that uh, Union Territory is very much a temporary phenomenon uh, and nowhere did the Honorable Prime Minister or Honorable Home Minister or anybody else suggest uh, that Jammu and Kashmir's statehood uh, was dependent on uh, the BJP being a part of the government or the BJP heading the government. Uh, these Honorable Gentlemen always said that statehood will be restored to Jammu and Kashmir. In fact, the BJP always said that it's a three-step process, delimitation, election, statehood. This was the sort of sequence. Uh, we've had two out of three. We've had delimitation, we've had elections. Statehood is the next logical step. So statehood is the next logical step. And as you said, the Prime Minister, the Home Minister had promised that during the campaign as well. But what about uh, 370? Because you had made that an issue, the return of uh, Article 370. Uh, I think you had said in one of the campaign rallies as well that it took the BJP 40 years to get rid of 370. So you're not naive to imagine that you know you can suddenly restore 370 just because uh, there is a new government in the state uh, in Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, what will it take? Do, do, do you reckon 370 can be brought back if, let's say, for example, uh, there were to be a, a, a new parliament or a, or a new government at the centre? Only then will 370 uh, can be restored. I'd, I'd like to believe so. Uh, that said, this government is not changing for the next four and a half years, uh, so. Uh, for us, it's, it's part of our political ideology, it's an issue that we plan to keep alive, uh, but it's also not an issue on which we plan to hoodwink people. Uh, as the National Conference President said, it's a long struggle, it may take a hundred years, uh, but it's not a struggle we're going to give up. Do you see uh, statehood, and you had mentioned this in the earlier answer as well, you said delimitation, assembly elections and then statehood. Uh, do you see that being restored forthwith and, and what is the state, new state government's plan uh, to try and sort of expedite, if you will, that process of restoration of statehood. Will the BJP live up to the promise? Uh, I hope so. Uh, as I said, uh, I believe the Prime Minister is an honourable man. Uh, he has, in more than one uh, speech, more than one interview, talked about full statehood for Jammu yeah. and Kashmir. Uh, so is the case with the Honourable Home Minister. And uh, I believe that, I believe the people of Jammu and Kashmir should be rewarded for their faith in Indian democracy. In spite of everything that has happened to Jammu and Kashmir in the last 8-10 years, the people of Jammu and Kashmir overwhelmingly endorsed Indian democratic norms. They deserve 
to 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 have that recognized they deserve to have that rewarded and at the moment the best way to reward that uh, would be to give them what they want and that is the restoration of their statehood because at least that's one issue where we are not divided on on regional lines we're not divided on religious lines we're not divided on political lines there is no political party that has said jammu and kashmir should not be a state but but talking about those regional and and religious divisions uh, clearly this is a verdict that's almost like mirroring two states you know in kashmir your party has done exceptionally well you have won a majority of the seats in jammu the bjp has done exceptionally well they've won a majority of the seats and the concern again and again is this mr umar abdullah that you know hindu jammu has voted for bjp and muslim kashmir has voted for a national conference that in itself is a is a friction what would you say to the people of jammu uh, who are worried perhaps that uh, you know unki sunwai nahi hogi that their their representation won't be heard because the government will be more uh representative of of kashmir and and kashmir valley aspirations and uh, uh interests i want them uh, to believe uh, and to to realize and not only realize but to experience uh, that uh, this is not a government of the voters of the national conference or this is not a government of the voters of the coalition this is not even a government of voters it is a government for the people of jammu and kashmir independent of who you voted for or whether you voted at all and therefore this government will be as much a government for the people who voted for the bjp as for those who didn't uh, and and that is only right uh, no government should punish a people uh, just because they didn't vote for the ruling party i mean that's not how democracy works we win we win on party lines but we govern for everybody and and therefore it would be my endeavor to ensure that whichever uh, leader is elected whoever heads this government uh, through their actions uh, proves uh, that this government is of the people of jammu and kashmir and and i'm sure that's what we'll do all right my one final question uh, mr omar abdullah you've been chief minister before uh, you're going to be chief minister again how have you changed uh, in the last 10 years from being ex chief minister to being chief minister again now chief minister elect but so much has changed so much has changed the last time i was chief minister i was also chief minister of ladakh uh, i had uh, ministerial colleagues from kargil and leh today i don't uh, today the people of ladakh are foot marching to delhi uh, to get their rights because nobody hears them uh, they they go unheard uh, in the current system uh, i was chief minister of a state uh, today Uh, the government that comes will be the government of a union territory i was also chief minister of the most empowered state in the country that is clearly not the case and i'm also the last chief minister in this country to have ever had a six year term uh, and 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 completed that term uh, the next chief minister will have a five year term uh, so in 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 so many ways things have changed uh, all right omar abdullah once again many congratulations for what is a resounding victory uh, in jammu and kashmir and uh, wish you good luck for your next term as chief minister albeit as you said in very very different circumstances